Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to usher you into the weekend. We're going to have a nice warm weekend, a uh, pretty warm weekend, um, and next couple of weeks is going to be pretty sunny and warm f- for a while. So let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. i got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about in the show, uh, including a open a completing of a 50-mile trail that connects Missoula to Hamilton. So We'll talk about that a little bit later, but let's hear. Let's start to some weather. It is currently 57. It's a really nice morning um, tonight. Today, it's going to be a high of 87 degrees. The low is going to be 55. And pretty much kind of stay that way. It's probably going to it's going to slightly dip a little bit cooler into the uh, mid to low 80s. And then pick right back up as soon as uh, the, uh, your work week starts that, next week. So, um just letting you guys know that uh, there is a fire that's happening in the Montana-Idaho border, um, and uh, the uh, and the uh, the Reynolds fire has grown to about a thousand acres. Fire season is upon us officially, but don't expect smoke to ruin your weekend. Uh, there are currently 80 firefighters, including two hotshot crews and three helicopters, assigned to the blaze, burning in the far southern reaches of the bitter northern forest along the edge of the Frank Church Wilderness. At this point, no structures are in immediate danger. Firefighters are using the Reynolds Lake Trailhead route to on the southern edge of the fire as anchor points. Plans call for a uh, building lineup east and west sides of the fire from the roads. Um, weather is looking hot and dry for the next week or so, and some winds are not going to help either. So uh, they've dumped a bunch of water. They have retardant on the line, um, so they're uh, expecting to be able to stop the fire at the fire line. So we'll see how that all works out. But let's bring it back to the city of Missoula. Uh, The old mercantile is looking for some tax increment funding, some TIF funds for continuing work at the Hotel Marriott they're working on. They're asking for a little, uh, a bit under half a million dollars to continue working on it, which was uh, denied uh, as of yesterday. But of course, actually, it wasn't really denied. It was more like tabled. So it's it's still in the the planning phases. So uh, Missoula Redevelopment Agency's board decided on Thursday not to discuss a request by the developer of the downtown market dial, Andy Holleran, for the extra $442,938 in tax increment assistance. Instead, they decided to approve uh, funding for an art gallery that will be located at the former Uptown Diner that was cl- uh, that w- w- is uh, due to be demolished. Um, this will be, the, so what's going to be replaced the uh, Uptown Diner is going to be a two-story building with a basement um, for uh, potentially having fine wine in the basement while having an art gallery on the main floor. So m and uh, has been busy and as of right now, Mercantile request w- will be tabled until further discussions. In national news, uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions said this, If you are smuggling a child, then we will prosecute you and the child will be separated from you as required by law. If you don't like that, then don't smuggle children over the border. Uh, part of the Trump administration's zero tolerance policy towards illegal immigrants who cross the border, even if the kids are their own. So basically, imagine if you get your family out of Mexico and you are arrested for trafficking your child. Um, July 26th, um, so the, the, a new law uh, from the ACLU, uh, Human Rights, uh, declared that a uh, uh, judge in San Diego said that uh, as of July 26th, all children must be reunited with their parents. And so far, uh, kids who are under the age of five were reunited with their parents about half of them were but of course uh, and they're expected they still have until the 26th to find all these kids so um, approximately 45 were found ineligible for reunification because either parents could not be confirmed parents were already deported or parents had a criminal background which made them unsuitable for reunification Um, at least 12 parents of under five, uh, the kids who are under five were already deported from this country. It is expected that the number will grow when the older children are accounted for. The federal government will have to work to reunite those families with their children if they request reunification. So uh, that's what's happening in the news today. And somebody's calling me, and I will ignore it. So <laughs> I probably put it, should put my phone on silent. All right, so I got some new programs that are going to be uh, airing on MCAT. So without further ado, here is some new programs um, that are going to be airing your weekend. So here it is. Along with uh, 
1,002 Buddhas of our eon, um, and uh, 1,000 stupas, each containing an image of uh, Jitsudma Tara, uh, as well as many, many other uh, sacred res representations of body, speech, and mind. The accolades given to Dr. Hine are numerous and well-deserved. Author or co-editor of more than 15 books, Dr. Hine is currently serving as the John A. Hanna Distinguished Professor of History at Michigan State University after retiring from her position as Board of Trustees Professor of History and African American Studies at Northwestern University where I first met Dr. Hine while pursuing my doctorate. A founder and early leader in the field of black women's history, Dr. Hine was awarded the National Humanities Medal at a White House ceremony in 2013. The list of awards she has received, of awards now given in her honor, and of the prestigious fellowship she has received is long and, well, simply stunning. Rather than list them all here, suffice it to say that it was with good reason that that panel speaker who appeared after Dr. Hine was at a loss for words. Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time to uh, talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. The movies that... Uh, I just want to vomit because these movies look all terrible. And starting off with the <laughs> terrible uh, movies that are coming out there is uh, from the Tony 
award-winning play, I assume, uh, comes a sequel to a play that uh, never had a sequel. But Hollywood decided they need to get more ABBA in their life, and you can get more ABBA in your life once again as they dive into Mamma Mia, here we go again. And no, that's not supposed to be sarcastic. And boy, do we go again. But this time, Cher is in this movie. She's the mama of the Mamma Mia, so she's Mama Mamma Mia. So, so she's acting. And people who like Cher will like it, I guess. But you don't have to believe in life after love. I feel as though this movie blows. I really can't get enough. No. <laughs> uh, I should, probably should have actually sung that, so it would have actually made more sense. Equalizer. This movie is uh, assume about math and finding out exactly how many people will see this movie, like Taken, but with Denzel Washington. This movie is sequel to a movie I never watched, so I assume more of the same with a little difference to keep you entertained like any other sequel has. Next Marvel movie or uh, Dead Zone, uh, August movie, uh, of course, you know, let's face, let's basically face it. Um, it's up to Denzel Washington to balance the scales, balance the scales, balance the scales, scales, scales. Anyways, Equalizer 2, math just got harder because you have to show your work. Anyways, Moving on, I'm just going to breeze right through this one. The internet is a dangerous place, and the dark web is back in the sequel about being unfriended. Unfriended dark web stars people who are young because us old people don't understand the internet. As someone who works with kids in our amazing summer camps that are happening now and next week, um, most kids actually don't really know how to navigate the internet that well, so I don't know what to say about this. Uh, so don't assume uh, uh, navigating the web, let alone stumbling on the dark web, will make this movie any better. But horror movies are meant to be like, really? Even uh, my slow cousin could have seen this coming. Wait a minute, am I the slow cousin? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch gears. Uh, we got things and uh, movies and things and things and stuff. Uh, here is our summer series uh, featuring the kids of our time travelers camp. So uh, when I come back, I will uh, talk about city council. Just like any man, he has his problems. The one thing that he likes more than causing problems is drinking. You know my so mom. much drinking. I I he forgets who he is, oh. and then he turns, runs, hides, and he continues to do what he does. Yeah, this is Aaron Javisky. <laughs> what a wonderful play today. Hey, what do you got there? This thing. This is my football. It was signed by LeBron James. What are you talking about? I thought LeBron James played basketball. What are you talking about? I thought Tom Brady played basketball. <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense. And who's that guy? This is Evan Javeski's caretaker, Rick. He's a good guy. Oh, you mean my good friend, Rodriguez. What? He used to play golf with me and my pet. It was a really wonderful time, you know, with, uh, ah, who is it? Babe Ruth played, uh, the golf with me. It's pretty great. Evan Javeski is actually clinically insane and banned in 30 states due to his crimes. and Japanese noodles, and how everybody shoved them into boots and started throwing them at each other, and it was, it was really crazy, I just, I didn't really understand what was going on. I, I don't, ah, uh, th th this football is like, they move sometimes, I, I, I don't know what, where am I? Who am I? It was at this point where Evan Javeski was questioning everything in his life. He didn't know who he was. Who's talking? It's the narrator. You pipe down, you have to don't I, say that you, thing. You, you, I, you I are. am not mentally you, ill. You I'm are not. mentally ill. Whatever, whatever. You, Come on, oh, Ramirez, let's they go. They head off. They're going to be going let's to go, a place downtown with probably Sweet Peaks. Thank you. You're a crazy person. I'm telling you, 
sir, I'm serious. There's this guy in here, he's got dementia. He's crazy, he doesn't know his sports facts. He's obviously abusing an animal. You gotta help me. Show him something that he won't forget. Public safety and health want to talk about what what they do with some of the cars that are never reclaimed and some of the cars that are abandoned. So the city of Missoula moved to uh, go forward on um, um, approving uh, money of a $40,000, uh, basically, let's say you have a vehicle towed or abandoned on the highway. The Missoula Police Department re uh, viewed responses from towing companies interested in um, entering into an agreement. Uh, after review, it was decided that a pro towing's uh, solici solicitation response would be accepted and a two-year contract would be submitted for approval. City fund would be 20000 per year, and this is going to be a two-year deal with uh, the, some of the towing companies. The city cannot just leave vehicles downtown um, or at the lot and in the meaning of public safety and health they discuss this item and here is Scott officer Scott Hoffman talking a little bit about this and generally these things have very little value and uh, most of the time uh, they end up uh, in Brian Hensel's lot uh, which does not make him happy and we try to figure out a way uh, to dispose of those either through uh, recycling at, at Pacific or it, it just find a way to get rid of them. The, the tow companies truly don't want them. There's no value to them. They're never going to get paid for them, uh, and they just take up space in their lots. So it's, it's always kind of been a struggle for us, and, and we try to find solutions on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, and in particular those that are, are stored. We had one up at the railroad here for the last, uh, on railroad property last year that, that was uh, somewhat challenging and, and just trying to find a place to put those is, is difficult. All right, so that was Scott Hoffman uh, just trying to figure out where to put some of the vehicles that have been in um, impound lots forever and just haven't been claimed or anything like that. But um, one of the city council members, Michelle Cares, is concerned that uh, with all these towing, with the towing companies and um, trying to figure out exactly where person's cars, sometimes uh, people, when they get their cars towed, they don't know exactly where to go to find the cars, and that's one of the concerns that Michelle Cares has, and Scott Hoffman responds. Like the process of communicating to folks that their vehicle has been towed, um, there was an example of a Ward 6 resident's vehicle who had parked illegally, it was their fault, they had parked illegally on um, MRL property outside of Ward 6, but um, and the MRL had towed their vehicle, and then they spent a whole bunch of time trying to find it, and they thought the, the city had it because they knew that they had parked inaccurately in MRL. They talked to the wrong person, and MRL was like, no, we don't have it. And so then they spent like a month trying to find it, and it was just like so frustrating for them. Um, I guess like that's what I wanted to bring up for council is that like if a constituent reaches out there's a potential that the city doesn't have it and someone else has it because other people's private property, they can tow them. Um, <laughs> do you have any additional commentary on that word vomit? <laughs> well, that's not entirely uncommon. Um, we do have vehicles that are repoed. Uh, they're taken to a particular uh, tow company or taken by a particular tow company or they're brought to a private lot, um, reported stolen. We have no idea uh, where they might be. Um, one of our processes is to go through our list of, of tow companies, contact tow companies, and figure out who may indeed have it. So, And I think that is what ended up happening, is that in the end it was PD who was like, we don't have it, but we did find it. And yes. then they were like, you know, finally. All right, so just kind of cutting them off right then and there. Um, so the city did move forward on um, getting this approved. Uh, sometimes you never know who actually has your car towed. I mean, and even sometimes, like, uh, you know, there's Red's towing, Pro towing, and Iron Horse towing. And those are the ones that I can just think of on the top of my head for any kind of towing company. But you just never know. Like, sometimes, you know, if you get um, towed, you're kind of like, oh, you know, it, you don't know who's going to tow you, and there's not a lot of no, no, there was no notification towards me that I was towed. It was just that I had to call around to find the towing company. So in a way, that's uh, it's a thing that really wasn't resolved 
in this meeting, but I guess the only thing they resolved is basically trying to find the space to put abandoned vehicles if they've over time if they've overstayed their welcome at the couple towing companies here and there. So it's just find the parking spaces. And one thing for sure is that in Missoula, there's there's not enough parking spaces. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on. Let's talk about something a little uh, happier and cheerier that doesn't involve uh, ve uh, the vehicles that you're common with, but the vehicles that we use, um, bikes. So the city of Missouri recently acquired the Montana Reeling property in Urban Renewal District 3. Uh, so basically, it's uh, that area. It's a, it's, a, it's a small section, but it's an area bet basically between... Uh, kind of like where the mall's at, uh, by the railroad tracks, all the way to uh, Reserve Street. There's like a, a, a triangle, basically. Uh, the um, property between North Avenue, Johnson Street, South Avenue, and the west right-of-way, Montana Rail Link. This uh, triangular-shaped uh, property historically created a significant gap in the Bitterroot Trail. And closing the tra this trail gap has been a, a priority for the community and for Missoula Redevelopment Agency since the creation of the U URD 3 in the year 2000. So uh, a ribbon cutting uh, celebration took place on Wednesday. The city extended its appreciation to the Mon Montana Rail Link and Washington Co, Co, uh, Co for uh, making this connection possible. So here is Mayor John Engen. Our transportation folks told me that about 400 people used this trail yesterday before it was open. Because uh, we don't need rules in Missoula. We don't need them. <laughs> and that just, is, I think that's testament to the demand here. Uh, it's been, I don't know how many years, Larry, since you and I began talking about the possibility of the city purchasing this piece of property from Montana Rail Link. Uh, Larry Simpkins, Tom Walsh, Mike Halligan, and the folks at Rail Link and Washington Companies have been tremendous in this process, not only in providing us this final link between downtown Missoula and Hamilton, but also in helping us build this beautiful park that will serve a neighborhood that needs more parks and a community that always needs more parks. Welcome to applaud those folks. Oh yeah, Mayor John Engen uh, was part of the ribbon cutting ceremony. Um, also the president of Montana Rail Link, Tom Walsh, um, spoke as well. And we'll end it with a nice ribbon cutting uh, and you get a, a chance to kind of see uh, what uh, the site looks like. So uh, without further ado, here is the last quote and a nice little uh, montage of the area. Um, so we are just absolutely thrilled to be part of this whole, you know, the, the trail, the park, especially the park, you know, Montana Railing Park is going to be here forever. And it's going to be a themed park, of course, with railroad stuff, which is really cool for, for us railroad folks. Um, we're proud to have worked with uh, the city of Missoula, the Missoula Redevelopment Agency, the Parks and Recs people have been fantastic. Uh, and I said, with, as I said earlier, with Mayor Engen as well. So, um, you know, my hope for this park is that it's going to be a fan favorite for all of Missoula, not only for this area here, uh, this, these neighborhoods, but for all of Missoula and the people that come through Missoula. And I think it really will be, you know, when you think about it, why, why wouldn't it be? Uh, it's going to be a railroad park. Kids absolutely love trains. They always have, they always will. So I think it's going to be wonderful. Um, and I think it's going to be here for generations to come. We're really excited to be to be part of it. So thanks very much again for coming. Appreciate it. Help me do it. There you go. Ready? One, two, three, go.
big shout out to Ron Scholl for uh, making that video possible. And you can watch the whole video on our Facebook page, Missoula Community Media Resource. Hey guys, Missoula event time. Talk about some things that are happening in the city of Missoula area. Let's kick things off with uh, all your gymnastics stuff. Hey, if you want your kid to do some in uh, indoor tumbles and have a safe environment for them to do some sweet, cool parkour gymnastic moves, Roots, Mismo, and Misa, otherwise known as Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, all have your indoor fun for, and of course, padded space for safety for some of your young kids who are just uh, getting around to um, getting used to their new bodies as soon because <laughs> they're, there's kids, they're, they're new to this world. Anyways, Speaking of new, Tiny Tales and Storytime is a public library starts at 10.30 a.m. It's a good way for kids to get involved with books. Cribbage and Bridge also is happening at the Missoula Senior Center. Hey, play some card games, hang out, have a lunch. Missoula Senior Center, best dance floor in the Missoula. Great. Uh, open hours in the makerspace at Missoula Public Library from 1 to 6 p.m. This is your perfect opportunity to use some of those skills at the workshops that they have at the Missoula Public Library to in basically build um, 3D models. They have a cutter, uh, like a 3D cutter thing, which is pretty cool. So you can check all that stuff out at the Missoula Public Library and their open hours between 1 and 6 p.m. You can ask for assistance by your many uh, helpful librarians uh, that are there. Um, predator feeding is also happening um, today in the afternoon. Um, they will be feeding a cricket to one of the hungry predators at 4 p.m. and they do it every Friday. Um, they can jo join as they explain and demonstrate how they capture and consume prey. Come see who's hungry today. Treasure Island, MCT, Missoula Children's Center is doing all sorts of summer camps all this summer long. Um, Treasure Island is the play. It's going to be a, it's a musical reinventive um, imagination um, from Robert Louis Stevenson's book. Um, you can join the Missoula Children's Theater for the summer adventure. Young Jim Hawkins, a mysterious lad, a mischievous lad, lives with his mother and six sisters in a seaside village on the coast of Maine. The year is 1782, and the American War for Revolution is in the last days. Longing for adventure, Jim comes under the hypnotic spell of legendary pirate Long John Silver. Well. Waiting tables at his family inn, Jim finds a treasure map and, with the villainous Silver as his seeming mentor, sails uncharted seas with a ragged map to a mysterious treasure island. Also, if you guys are going to Karis Park this uh, afternoon, uh, starting at 4 p.m. is the Big Sky Barbecue Festival. It is the ninth annual Big Sky Barbecue Festival happening at Karis Park today at 4 p.m. All proceeds will go to support programs and missions at the Missoula Food Bank Network and their mission to end hunger in Montana. So, yeah. They're going to have food, beer, music, and fun for the whole family. Um, it is the most delicious fun you have all summer long. And it's b basically free to attend. You have to pay for the food, but it's just like uh, kind of like what they do for out to lunch and all that stuff. It's just kind of like you don't have the ticket, to, you don't have to buy to get in, but you have to uh, buy to enjoy some barbecue, you know. Uh, gallery opening, Wild Blue. Radius Gallery is opening a new exhibition. Uh, it's called Wild Blue. Um, pulls together a surprising, delightful, eclectic collection of fine arts with oil on canvas. Tabby Ivy expertly captures Montana's serene, sublime beauty in her mixed media paintings. Amy uh, Brickman um, puts an expressive, contemporary spin on Western themes and rounding out the slow 16 ceramic artists. So there's going to be a bunch of artists at the uh, Radius Gallery. Um, they're doing an art opening. You can check it out 5 p.m. or if you miss it, you can always check out all sorts of art openings all around the city of Missoula anytime, anytime, anywhere. Um, there's a whole bunch of art museums in the downtown Missoula area. The effects of climate change on farming. FARM is hosting a conservation Voters and soil cycles will take place on what the future of climate change means for Montana farmers. Farm will also talk about the importance of doing our part to support local farms in Missoula and the importance of um, composting. They will teach the uh, community how to compost at home, even with out a garden and what a huge impact composting has on lessening greenhouse gas emissions. Come spend time in the, the beautiful farm in Missoula and learn about how they can uh, do our part together. All right, so that's all your Friday events. Here are some of your late night Friday events. Uh, Sunrise Saloon is doing some country music uh, via pay dirt. Uh, Subtle Riot Live is gonna be at the VFW. It's gonna be folk and funk music. Uh, Idle Ranch Hands is gonna be at the Union Club and James McMurdy uh, is gonna be at the Top Hat Lounge. It's gonna be some folk and rock music happening at the Top Hat tonight. If you guys are interested in doing any of that stuff, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net for your Friday. Um, here is some of your uh, art 
here's a new art clip for you guys, and it's the last time we'll be able to play this new art clip. It is from the Clay Studio of Missoula. They usually have a pretty uh, rotating door when it comes to some of their exhibits, so you got to get there fast before it's too late. So here is this art clip, and then when I come back, I'm going to talk all about your weekend events. Thanks to our very own Rick Phillips for providing that. He goes around um, the city of Missoula and collects a little taste of all the art museums in the city of Missoula. So if you ever want to check out any of those, you can go to MCAT's YouTube channel, MCAT TV, um, for the subscription. And be sure to subscribe to get any updates to any of our local programming as well, because we're going to have a whole bunch of new programs going to be airing for the next couple of weeks through our summer camps. So stay tuned. Uh, here is... Your Saturday events, hey, if you guys are planning on um, getting up early, you might not want to go out tonight and um, enjoy some farmer's market. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on at the farmer's market. Uh, Red X's, um, they also have a people's market where they sell knickknacks and other handcrafted items right in front of the Thomas Mar Bar off of Pine Street. And if you're interested in a little bit of mixture between hot, cold, um, fresh foods, uh, fish, cheeses, all sorts of cool little things that they have down there. Uh, the Clark Fork River Market, right next to the Clark Fork River underneath the Higgins Bridge. You can't miss it. There's a whole bunch of booths. You can check it all out every Saturday, every Saturday from 8 a.m. to about 1 p.m. Let's kick things off uh, with other things that are happening. There's a 4-H dog show. Hey, you like dogs? Who doesn't like dogs? This is Missoula. Support your local 4-H dogs. Uh, the 4-H youth who have been dedicated to training these animals all year has put these dogs through the paces. Judging begins at 9 a.m. at the Missoula County Fairgrounds. Of course, for more information, you can go to the Facebook page for Missoula 4-H. Moon Randolph Homestead does tours um, every single Saturday from 11 to about 4 p.m. It's all day, kind of drop-ins welcome. They're, they usually just kind of um, kind of show you around the the homestead, just kind of see what kind of buildings are still existing, 100 plus year old um, homesteaded farming lands and buildings. It's just a wonderful place to go. You should check it out. Um, MCAT did a out and about, but you you only get a little taste of it at, uh, if you look up Missoula on about, Moon Randolph. Um, hey, Rocky Mountain Elf Foundation is doing a kids event for game day. This is from 11 to 1 p.m. Um, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, uh, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, Elk count, uh, count Country Visitor Center. Um, so they're doing it at 11 a.m. So Missoula Sectarium is doing uh, caddis fly cases. Caddis fly cases have always been f so fascinating when we find them in on our banks on the river. Join us as we learn about these little aquatic insects, make these intricate castings, and why they do it. Uh, they will also be creating their own cases using different materials just like the caddis fly. Summer Beach Party, Sunrise Saloon. This is a family-friendly event that's happening at the Sunrise Saloon right at 3 p.m. It's going to be live music by Bop A Dips. Um, never heard of them. Bring your family, hot rod, or classic car, and show it off. Limbo contests and more. So this is kind of interesting, cool. And, and if you're not interested in doing a beach party, 
the Zach is doing the tenth birthday party of the Zach, and it's going to be at it's going to be a block party on the north side. So just uh, if you go to Kettle House, you can kind of see there's going to be a whole bunch of hubbub happening at the uh, uh, Zootown Arts Community Center. Uh, grab your shades and sunscreen and prepare for art and fun at the seventh um, annual north side block party, which will be the tenth uh, birthday party of the Zach. So it's the seventh. It's a bunch of numbers all around. So there'll be a birthday cake. Uh, this is Zach's last North Side West Side block party because they're going to be moving into a new facility, a bigger facility to support the Zootown Arts Community Center. And I, if you get a chance to see the building designs and stuff like that, it is amazing. So you can look up more information by going to the Zootown Arts Community Center. I believe it's the Zach.org. Don't quote me on that, but you can find out more information if you, if you just Google the Zootown Arts Community Center. Missoula Against AIDS. Uh, gathering at Southgate Mall. We're really switching gears on this one. Missoula Against AIDS welcomes you to this gathering at the Southgate Mall, 3 p.m. A lot of things are happening in the afternoon. There's literally nothing that happens in the Saturday afternoon, but there's a lot happening this Saturday afternoon. And you may or may not win a free hat, but the MMA, MAA is um, not responsible for any uh, rule violations at the Southgate Mall. <laughs> so this is a, a gathering at the Southgate Mall starting at 3 p.m. And um, it's to support uh, people... Uh, who have AIDS and to uh, help prevent AIDS and the spread of AIDS, um, all gathering at the Southgate Mall at 3 p.m. Um, Missoula Towns, now, then, no, no, Montana Towns, geez, then, now, and tomorrow. Frenchtown Pond State Park is the place to learn all about the history. Take a closer look at the small places that are a big part of Montana's story with health sterns during the Montana Towns, then, now, and tomorrow at Frenchtown Pond State Park on Saturday at 7 p.m. This is a vendor free, it's open to the public, and is good for all ages. Um, if you're interested in, in doing anything else tonight, they have some salsa Saturday night at the Dark Horse Bar, Salsa 406. They have Absolutely with Chris Moon at the Badlander at it's DJ Music. Um, Lolo Creek Band is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon. Movie Cult Lost Highway is going to be at the, Lo the Roxy Theater for if you want to do a uh, late night movie. Britt Aronson and the Bluegrass Boys is going to be at the Union Club. The Sheen will wrap up your Saturday at the Top Hat starting at 10.15. Those are all your events for your Saturday. Um, there's a couple other things happening on Sunday. They have a Windermere Sup Cup 2018 at the Holiday Inn at the Park, 10 a.m., Country Brunch at Western Cider, Dance Church at the Downtown Dance Collective. Downtown Dance Collective hosts a lot of um, dancing classes for anybody interested in, in um, learning to dance or basically refining their dancing. So all sorts of wonderful things happening in the Missoula kind of area as well. Um, there's always family story time at the Missoula Public Library to get your kids engaged in reading. Always got to say, give props to the Missoula Public Library for doing a bunch of outreaches to get kids engaged with reading. Um, the Roxy also is doing a sci-fi summer series, um, and, t and Sunday's movie is Total Recall, starting at 2.30 p.m. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for the weekend. I do want to show you one more, this art clip, because I've been showing this a lot this month, but this is the last time we'll be able to show this. I will not be here next week, but I will be back after this art clip to tell you about all the MCAT news.
So you only get about another week to enjoy some of those art um, installations at the Museum Art Museum. They'll be switching gears and they'll be all, doing all sorts of stuff. I'll stand a little bit more centered between the M and the L. So here's a couple MCAT announcements. Uh, today at 4.30 p.m. we're going to be doing a live show featuring the kids of our animation camp part de. So it's our second animation camp. We added a second animation camp because it was so popular with the first one. So we had an overflow. So we were able to put them in this camp. We'll have a bunch of kids from our stop animation camp as well. Here is uh, just a little uh, glimpse of what you guys can expect um, as you can see. Uh, one of our kids, Aaliyah, she uh, made this cool little uh, stop animation. You'll be able to hear sound later on the show. Um, it's basically about these two girls who are hanging out and get lost. Will they get found? Find out today at 4.30 uh, when we go live on MCAT. So um, other MCAT news, MCAT is also still closed for the public. Um, if, you, uh, if there's anybody who wants to request any checkouts or anything like that, be sure to call ahead of time. Our number is 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. You can also email us mcat at mcat.org if you want to have any questions about equipment checkout or any becoming involved with Missoula Community Access Television, uh, Missoula's community media resource for anybody interested in getting a foothold in media, which includes editing, videography, uh, some sound recording. We're not too good with sound recording, but we're getting better as we're getting more and more. Um, we've just had a couple people who come in here to use our studio to record some of their audio. Um, we're st we're, we'll hopefully be uh, in a better position as we get further and further along, but we're able to uh, satisfy most people who are looking to kind of get a good array in a ba basic video broadcast medium. So just letting you guys know, um, if you want more information about MCAT, you can go to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your source for everything Missoula in terms of uh, local government, uh, public access, uh, university uh, uh, sponsored uh, series, which include lecture series from all vast and very uh, various departments throughout the University of Montana. It is a great resource. We also do a bunch of live streaming as well. So if you're interested in having MCAT live streaming for you, you can go to our website, MCAT.org, where you go to once again, request event recording. You can call and we can kind of talk you through it as well, but it's pretty uh, straightforward, it's pretty streamlined, so you can request event recording. Or if you already have a program already done and you want to put it on the channel, just get more uh, kind of spread out into the community, you can submit a program right here. If you're interested in finding out more information about myself, me, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula, so cheap that I didn't decide to by wakeupmissoula.com. Who cares? Anyways, if you want to find out more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can Google me, Wake Up Missoula. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and the Twitter, and all sorts of wonderful things as well. I will not be here next week as we will be doing full gear zombie camp. We have a bunch of kids in that camp. We're going to be hopefully doing some disgusting zombie short films along the, all next week with some zombie makeup. Get all bloody and messy. It's going to be amazing. And it's usually a gear towards older kids, 14 plus. Um, it's completely full. It's like literally the first camp that fills up through all our camps. So, um, you snooze, you lose. But you'll get a chance to see all those short, fun zombie shorts all compiling into a nice little chunk happening this Friday at 4.30 uh, um, p.m. Also, every uh, one of our live shows is at 4.30 p.m. So today at 4.30 p.m. and next week at 4.30 p.m. You'll be seeing a whole, a whole bunch of posting behind the scenes of our zombie camp as we go along to making zombie camp happen. Yeah, yeah, as we make zombie camp happen. So thanks for joining me. And I just got to stop it right here because I'm literally brain farting all over the place. Sorry, I can't believe I just said that out loud. So thank you for joining me. And I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. It's going to get warm, but it's supposed to be into the mid to low 80s. So you guys can enjoy some outdoor fun this weekend as well. And there's going to be a lot of events happening, especially Saturday afternoon. So check it out. Um, you go to various websites, MissoulaEvents.net. You can go to MCAT.org for all these programs and more um, through Missoula Community Access Television. So without further ado, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Thanks for joining me.